This chapter is entitled uh, Rational Numbers. Um, rational numbers are any number really that can be written as a fraction. Now that we've gotten uh, kind of a handle on fractions and how to work with them, I want to spend the next couple days really diving into decimals, uh, another form of rational numbers. Uh, decimals, uh, we, we kind of started with the with converting uh, when we converted decimals to fractions, fractions to decimals. Um, we're going to spend the next couple days really focusing on uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. For a lot of you, this will be a little review, but I wanted to get behind uh, the rules for uh, these operations and where they come from. So, take adding and subtracting. And a lot of times with decimals, it helps it if you relate it to something, obviously like everything else related to something in the real world. The most obvious uh, application for decimals is the application of uh, money. So, for instance, if you think about the problem, uh, $2.10 plus $5.35, how would you add those two amounts of money together? Well, uh, you obviously would take your dollars, 5 plus 2, and add those. You'd take your... Uh, your 10 cents, okay, uh, you take your 10 cents and you add those, so that's 30 cents plus 10 cents is 40 cents. So you could add your dimes, you could add your pennies, okay, so you have $2 bills plus $5 bills, you have uh, one dime plus three dimes, and you have zero pennies plus five pennies, or a nickel if you like. Notice what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're keeping all the place values lined up by lining up that decimal point. So I'm adding tenths with tenths, hundredths with hundredths, uh, ones with ones, and that gives my, my answer of $7.45. Same thing for subtraction, but notice this time we've got this issue of, a, of a subtracting a small amount minus a larger amount. That means I'm going to end up with a certain amount of debt here. Okay, a positive plus a bigger negative makes a negative. Notice how I changed that to addition. So now all I'm thinking about is, um, are these numbers working with each other or against each other? Well, the positive $2.10 is going to work against the negative $5 amount, um, so I need to subtract these two numbers here. So I'm going to put the bigger number on top, just because that's how our algorithm has worked in the past. And I'm just going to subtract these how I normally would. Notice, subtracting one, ten, hundredths with hundredths, tenths with tenths, ones with ones. So 5 minus 0 is 5, 3 minus 1 is 2, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So it's a negative $3.25. Notice how I was able to set that negative sign before I actually did the problem. Then when I came back to it, I knew my answer was negative. All I had to do was do a little scratch work off to the side, just like up above. I did a little scratch work off to the side to find my answer. And notice where the answer goes here, guys answer is going to go underneath the problem. So what's the rule for adding and subtracting fractions? Um, you know the rule as just line up the decimals, but we line up the decimals because we're uh, keeping those place values together. We're adding tenths with tenths, hundredths with hundredths, thousandths with thousandths, ten thousandths with ten thousandths, uh, all the way down the line. Okay. So let's take a look at a couple examples. First of all, you have this uh, person who ran uh, in the Beijing Games 2001 um, and who ran it in 24.08 seconds. In June, she ran it in 23.35, and we want to know how much faster did she run it in June. Well, how much faster would imply that there's a difference between these two. So I want to subtract these two times to find well, the difference between them. So I'm going to write an expression. Remember, expressions are written horizontally, folks. So I'm going to write like this. And then all I'm going to do is come to the side, line up my decimals. This is scratch work, but it's scratch work that you need to show. And I'm going to subtract this. So I'll do 8 minus 5 is 3. Make sure you write your decimal before. That's something that people always forget. Borrow from the ones place to subtract the tenths place. And I end up with 0.73 seconds. And that's uh, seconds faster. So she ran almost a second faster in June than she ran in uh, it earlier okay all right next I'm gonna take 12.1 minus X and I'm gonna plug in a uh, negative 0.1 for X notice here I've subtracting a negative you don't want to deal with subtracting a negative make this addition subtracting a negative is adding a positive so I have 12.1 I'm gonna line up my decimals off to the side here and it's gonna be 0.1 
Obviously, a positive plus a positive is going to give me a positive 12.2 for my answer here. So what about uh, multiplying? We're going to get into multiplying, then we'll go to dividing. Let's do this problem. Let's, let's look back to multiplying fractions. 3 tenths times 7 hundredths. Well, there's nothing I can simplify, so I'm just going to multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. 3 times 7 gives me 21. 10 times 100 gives me 1,000. So this is 21 thousandths with the TH on the end. Keep that in mind. Now, what if, let's convert all these fractions to decimals and see what we get. Well, 3 tenths is 0.3. Uh, the seven one hundredths. Put the seven in the one hundredth spot. I'm just using the rules for converting that we used at the beginning of the of the unit here. And then uh, twenty one thousandths would be point zero two one. The one goes in the thousandths place. So how does this relate to the rules for multiplying decimals? Well, to multiply decimals, the first thing is this: multiply as if there are no decimals. So you just do three times seven is twenty one. Okay. We'll get to that. Thing in parentheses next, okay? And it should, this is important to note. You might want to add this to your notes here. More non-zero digits goes on top. All right, the number of decimal places in the original two numbers. Well, I have three, one for the point three, and two for the point zero seven. So three decimal places. That's the amount of decimal places I will have in my product. Notice one, two, three, and notice where this is coming from. This is coming from the fact that I have a tenths times a number in the hundredths, times a number, and that gives me a number in the thousandths. This comes from our rules for multiplying fractions. I multiply the bottom, so if I have, remember decimals, everything is a power of 10. Um, so this point, this 3 tenths is 0.3, that's 3 tenths, so the tenths times the hundredths for the 0 0.07 gives me thousandths for my answer, okay? So we take the, the place values, we multiply them together, that tells me what the place value is for my answer. So looking at a couple examples here. Uh, we're going to look at 2 times negative 0.51. First thing I'm going to do is determine my sign. I've got a positive times a negative, that's going to give me a negative answer. Next thing, I have a 0.51. This is getting that, that part where we put the number with the most non-zero digits on top. Um, 0.51, treat it like, treat this like 51 times 2. You can do 51 times 2, no problem. We'll worry about the decimals later. Notice 51 has two non-zero digits, 2 has 2, so I'll put that on top so I can use my standard uh, multiplying algorithm here. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, so I'm going to write 102. I'll go back to my factors, I had two decimals in the 0.51, none in the other, so that means I have negative 1.02. For our next problem, notice I have a negative times a negative. That's going to be a positive. The 3.75 has three non-zero digits, so I'll put that on top. So I'm just going to do 375 times 4. Well, then 4 times 5 is 20. Carry the 2. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 2 is 30. Uh, and then 4 times 3 is 12 plus uh, 3. That should be 15. Whoops, a daisy. Um, so... This should be, again, three decimal places should be 1.50. There's more evidence that I'm doing the uh, voiceover after I do the, the uh, video here. So that should be 1.5 uh, positive. Okay, here we go. Let's get into division then. For division, again, I'm going to look at some fractions because uh, we know how to do this. So let's do 5 eighths divided by 1 half. And remember, we have to do that keep, switch, flip thing, right? Because dividing by a half, splitting something into halves, is the same thing as doubling that amount. If I take a pie and I split it in half, I have two pieces now, not one piece, right? So 5 eighths divided by a half is the same thing as 5 eighths times 2 over 1. And I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to take the 2 and divide it by 2 and the 8 and divide it by 2. And that gives me 5 fourths. Notice what happens when I change these to decimals. 5 eighths, if I write that as a decimal, uh, which we would do the long division, but it's 0.625. Um, if I do 0.625 divided by 1 half, 0.5. Notice what happens when I do the long division here. Okay, and You do have to do the long division. First number always goes inside, whether it's the number on top, the first number, whatever number you read first, that goes inside our little uh, 
algorithm house here. The outside number, we can't divide by a decimal if the divisor has a decimal. So what I have to do is I have to move that decimal over. Now, little uh, little math stuff here, guys. Um, when we move the decimal, we are doing something mathematical. We are multiplying by 10. So remember, every time I multiply by 10, 0.5 times 10 gives me 5. All right. Now, the thing about that is if I multiply the outside number by 10, I've changed the problem. So to keep the problem the same, I have to multiply the inside number by 10 as well. So my new problem is going to be 6.25 divided by 5. So 6.25 divided by 5 is the same thing as 0.625 divided by 0.5. And now we're just going to long divide as, as usual after I put my decimal place up above so that I don't lose track of that. So how many times does 5 go into 6? It goes in once. And then 1 times 5 uh, is 5, leaving me a difference when I subtract of 1. Bring down the 2. Keep everything lined up. 5 goes into 12 twice, and 2 times 5 is 10. 12 minus 10 is 2. Bring down the 5 to give me 25. And 5 goes into 25 five times. So my answer here is 1.25. And notice how that relates to 5 fourths. 5 fourths is 1 and 1 fourth, which is 1.25. Okay, so we have to change that outside number first. So a couple examples here. Take 0.585, put it inside, and 0.25, put it outside. And I have to move the decimal twice on that 0.25. So I'm actually multiplying by 100. So my new problem becomes 58.5 divided by 25. It's the same thing as 0.585 divided by 0.25. Now it's a little easier to deal with. 25 can't go into 5, but it can go into 58 twice. 2 times 25 is 50. 58 minus 50 is 8. Bring down your 5 here, and 25 goes into 85 three times. 3 times 25 is 75. 85 minus 75 is 10. I need another 0, so I'll just put it there and bring it down. And then 4 times 25 gives me 100. So my answer is 2.34, and notice where the answer goes. Underneath the original expression. No negatives here, so it's just going to be positive. Next problem, 0.384 goes inside. 0.24 is going to go outside, and I need to move my decimal twice again uh, to get rid of the decimals on the outside number. So then you need to move it twice on the inside as well, otherwise the problem changes. So we have 38.4 divided by 24. That will be the same thing as 0.384 divided by 0.24. Keeping it the same, just making it easier to work with. So I know 24 goes into 38 once. I can only fit one of them in. But that gives me a difference of 14, and when I bring down the 4, I have 144. I don't know about you, but I don't really know my factors of 24. So I'm going to kind of look at uh, 2. I'm going to kind of guess how many times that goes into 14. So I'm going to guess 7. And I'm gonna, when I multiply out, though, notice what happens. I have 168. 7 is too big. So it's kind of like a guess and check here. I'm just going to back my 7 off and say it goes in 6 times and try that. 6 times 4 is 24. Carry the 2 up here. And 6 times 2 is 12 plus 2 is 14. There we go. Works out perfectly. 1.6 is the uh, decimal amount here. And this is the same thing, guys. If you see the problem written differently, don't get thrown off. Um, it's the same thing as if it were written with a fraction bar, 0.384 divided by 0.24. We would just stick it inside, divide as usual. All right, so you have some problems from the book. Um, you have a couple different page numbers there. Different page number means a, uh, a different operation. So um, bring your work in tomorrow, and we're going to hit this stuff hard. We're going to do a lot of practice with this. Um, but remember where all this stuff comes from. It all comes from the rules for fractions and the rules for decimals all relate to each other.